Hi and welcome to What Circuit. We've been sent a new oscilloscope from uh, Roder and Schwartz, so without any further ado, let's do a quick preliminary video now. There's going to be a full review coming up, but let's have a look at it. So first thing we say, it's a nice size, big screen on it. Let's get the power on. Used to use one of the uh, Agilent now Keysight 7000 series as the main scope. One that's really nice having a big screen, you know, collaborating with other people, zooming in, or particularly when you want to have lots and lots of logic channels together with your analog size. So let's see what we've got here. So it's a nice crisp display. We've got you know four analog channels. Looks like we've got 16 logic channels on here. Pattern generator, that's really great, you know, for test outputs. We've got on auxiliary outs on the front panel, which is unusual. I wonder if they're using that for something else. In fact, particularly on C down here, we've got a generator button. Aha! So we do actually have built-in function generator on this. So Roland and Schwartz are going down the uh, route now, actually having yeah, built-in built function generator, analog, logic analyzer. That's fantastic. That's really nice. And as we can see here, we actually have touch screen. And it looks like the menu's done quite nicely. Looks like we've got some basic standard bits and pieces up the top there. And we've got a menu down the side. Got all our channels. I wonder if we can touch those. Oh, that's fantastic. It's got access to all of those nice and quickly. We can turn on and off channels. That's great. And like that, colour coded on the uh, on the encoder knobs there. That's that's fantastic. So if we go back, yes, oh, I like that. And we do have push to zero and push fine and course uh, zoom modes in there. That's absolutely excellent. This is a really nice looking scope. Right, let's have a see if we let's have a look at some of the outputs and uh, try fitting some waveforms into it. See what we get. So we've added BNC cable now, just from our output to channel one. So let's go into the function generator. So it's interesting the way I've set this up. So if I go into the menu, so we've actually got something called apps, and they've broken this down into a few different bits of pieces you can get nice fast access to. And I've used this sort of thing before with some of the Roden Schwartz spectrum analyzers, where you can put them into the spectrum analyst mode, or you can do them as an EMI test receiver. Same bit of equipment, but all the menus set up nicely and it looks like I've done the same thing here, which is fantastic. So yeah, I've got FFT, XY mode, all of those. So for the moment, let's go into function generator. And this pulls up our side menu here. So we've got uh, some form of rectangle waveform here. Let's zoom center that in. Excellent, so what have we got access to? So we've got our usual DC sign Stuff like sync, that's useful, rectangle, pulse, triangle wave, and the key one, arbitrary from the looks of it. Fantastic, so arbitrary setup. It looks like we can load stuff in, probably from a USB stick. I'm really, at that point, that's an incredibly powerful little function generator there. That is really, really useful. And I think I saw, if let's go back, let's go back to uh, side for the moment. It has. We've got a sweep on there. So let's throw the sweep on. That's fantastic. So we can do frequency sweeping. So when you come into designing filters, that sort of stuff, or you're looking at uh, frequency response analysis, if you're doing um, anything that's got a closed loop control system on it, you've got everything you need to do right here. That is very, very nice indeed. Yeah, really powerful function generator. And if you're going back to apps, let's have a quick look. So we've got stuff like fast through a transform, exactly the way you expect. And uh, having a quick look through a spec sheet on this, this is actually a 10 bit ADC. So stuff like when you're doing FFT, you know, had this on some of the uh, smaller, older scopes, really high accurate. These ones had flash ADCs in them, again, high resolution, really does make a difference when you're trying to do you know, low noise analog work or FFTs, particularly sort of FFTs, audio spectrum, that sort of thing, really useful. Again, the short performance here is going to be really good. And notice the arrows. Looks like, well, that's really slick. So you can just click, drag that there. Let's try. Can we do, ah. Oh. 
Okay, so the touchscreen interface on this seems to be really nice. Some of the other touchscreen interfaces you use have felt a bit bolted on. They've just taken a traditional scope interface and then just made some of the buttons on there. So, yeah, but here actually seems really nicely designed, really good to use. It's intuitive. I like that. Yeah, very much like that. There we are. So we can... That's excellent. So I can just zoom out on here. We get greater resolution at low frequency end. Okay, so it looks like FFT have done themselves very nicely on that. It's really done themselves proud. So go back to... Uh, and it looks like we just drag this up and down. Fantastic. Yeah, so just drag it up and down. Got a nice deep menu on there. All the usual bits and pieces. Jump back to scope mode. That's really excellent. And they've also got nice deep memory on here. It's, uh, I think, about 10 mega samples, but then it's also got uh, all things like segmented memory, really helpful for when you want to capture infrequent events. Yeah, very, very nice uh, scope, this. Yeah, touchscreen's good. Capacitive touchscreen, so it's really sensitive. High resolution, so it's clear. Touchscreen bits and done really work nicely. It's got the nice bits and pieces. It's got the things. You've got your touch lock there. So if you've got this in a setup, you can just disable the touchscreen. So they haven't got USB stick in here, so it hasn't taken a screenshot. That's just a one one button to take a screenshot right on the front panel. Particularly when you're doing lots of you know hardware verification work and you're just iterating through lots of tests. So handy when you just you know change the input voltage, hit the button, change it again, hit the button. Really nice this. And talking about sort of capturing images and using them for later analysis, cut this neat little annotation tool down here. So we can actually grab that, we can then draw on the screen. So I can go back, ah, oh, there we are, okay, let's do that again. Do some arrows around, so you can stick text on there. That's absolutely fantastic for screenshots and that sort of thing. Yeah, really nice. That's absolutely excellent. Then those just stay on there. And you can just clear that somehow. Oh, yeah, you've got an eraser tool. Excellent. That is really handy, particularly when you, you know, you're going to forget what the... Uh, particular same feature you're looking at. Time you screenshot it, transfer it to USB, you got back to the computer, hit bang, annotation, type it out, really nice and quick. Really like that. So we've also got, let's just cut, really want to cover some of this stuff. We've got uh, protocol analysis. So as you'd expect, you can go through, you can go through all the stand, you know, different buses. So SSPI is what's called simple SPI. So that's SPI when you don't have a chip select signal. So this is just when you've just got uh, one master, one slave on an SPI bus. I squared C, UART, CAN, LIN, decode, all built into there. Display it in hexadecimal, display it in binary, whatever you need to do. And you take your inputs from the logic channels and the analog channels. Really, really nice. And then similarly, in the same way we've got the scope channels and we've got the function generator, they even have pattern generator on here as well. So using the four outputs here, which are the standard probe test signals, you can actually, you've got a square wave, but you can go counter, arbitrary, UR, SPI signals. So if you want to be able to, again, you want to be able to uh, generate signals to test something, you know, test your circuit. This does it. Very, very powerful. Yeah, really remarkably powerful. And I've got to mention with the um, protocol decode, you've got all the usual. You can go into configuration here. You've got a remarkably powerful configuration, and it actually talks you through it really nicely. I'm talking about, you know, talking through stuff. If you want to do things like probe calibration, it actually comes up on the screen, step by step, talks you through the whole process. It's sort of thing where, something like probe calibration, yeah, everyone's familiar with doing it, but some of the more unusual uh, setups that you have to do, having that feature, you know, features around the functionality, really nice just to have that sort of really clear help screen. So yeah, this is a fantastic scope. And just to give a feel for size, this is about 400 millimeters across, about 250 mil uh, high, and about 100 mil deep, and it's a really nice sort of slim line design. It's going to fit in your bench nicely. You see here, it's got good ventilation. Not too many ports on the back, but it's got your standard uh, USB. It's got your LAN, you know, LXI, and all of that. Uh, nice automation bits and pieces. But the nice thing, yeah, this will fit in your uh, shelf above your bench. It will just be pushed right to the back of your bench, whichever whatever you need to do. It's going to fit in nicely. It's lightweight. And it's a very, very powerful scope. 
So like I said at the beginning, we're going to do another video and we're really going to go to town on this. Uh, we'll do an in-depth review, we'll do a teardown and really see what makes it tick. But uh, until then, just to whet your appetite, quick run through the scope and yeah, this looks like really nice. This is the yeah RTB series from Roland Schwartz. Uh, this is the 300 megahertz, four analog channel, 16 digital channel model. And we should get some more information about what the uh, range includes. So until next time, thanks for watching.